Hey, what's up guys? My name is Ajono and welcome to episode 42 of Game Programming. So today we're going to take a look at the input methods for our player thing. Now, player extends mob right now and what mob doesn't have at this point is a move method. We talked about this last time and it doesn't have a move, it doesn't have a move method. All right. That's what we're going to talk about today. Moving. Um, so in other words, to make our player move, you know, via input, which, which we will cover eventually, um, we actually need to make a move method first of all. And this move method is going to control how, you know, how pixels are translated on the screen. So if we actually go into our entity class, entity.java, you can see that we've actually got X and Y. And of course, these, these integers, X and Y, these two variables, they control the location of a particular entity on our map. Now, when a mob moves, so when the mob or any, any player and anything really on the screen, any character actually moves, the X and Y variables for its location need to change. So yeah, that's, that's the basis of this. So first of all, move needs, move needs to actually take two parameters. Um, the X change, so in other words, how it changes on the X axis, and how its position changes on the y axis. So int xa, just because x, x is already taken, and ya, all right? So xa is going to basically um, tell our, our game which way the player moves on the x axis, if he even moves on the x axis. And sorry, I don't mean player, I mean any mob. Um, and the y is going to tell us uh, which way we move on the y axis. So in other words, these, these two really have th three states, all right? One is, is going up, sorry, with X, it's going left, not moving at all, or going right. With Y, it's going up, not moving at all, or going down. Okay, does that make sense? Three different possible things, right? Um, so, to explain this more, um, well, I guess you'll, you'll see it in a minute, but there's actually a few ways we need to sort of handle this. On its most basic form, it's simply x plus equals xa and y plus equals ya. That is the most basic form of the move, of the move method. However, that doesn't exactly end up working brilliantly, um, unfortunately, you know. But if you look at this, you can, um, you can sort of see how it works. Now, to sort of elaborate on that, um, what you'll actually have to do is you'll see that into these two parameters, we actually plug in either negative one, zero, or one, okay? Now, when we put negative one, that's going to mean that it's actually going to, if we put, if we put, if we put these variables into, let's just say X, um, if we actually put negative one, it's just gonna subtract one from the X variable. If we put zero in, it's not going to do anything to the X variable. And if we put in a one here, then it's actually going to add one pixel, another well, one unit. It is in it is in turn though one pixel to our x um, variable, which holds the location. So in other words, if we put one here, it's going to move to the right one one spot, I guess. Um, if we put zero, and it's not going to move at all. And if we put negative one, and it's actually going going to move to the left. Um, and that is sort of how it works. Um, that's what that 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 is the three numbers that we plug in. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't exactly work that way. One thing we need, we need to do is actually, um, I'm not actually gonna do this now, um, just cause it's, well, we have, I really wanna demonstrate what happens. But one other big thing that we need to do is actually handle collision. So in other words, we only allow us to actually move if there's collision. So in other words, if there's no collision, so if the collision thing returns false, then we move, all right? Just like that. Um, of course, the collision will have to be expanded in the future, but that is sort of how it works right now, all right? So in other words, if there's no collision, we move. The other thing we, we actually wanna keep track of is the direction that we're moving in. So if I type in uh, over here, just simply protected, oh, we've already got direction here, my bad. We've already got a direction variable, great. Um, what I actually wanna do is actually use this move method to, to determine which direction the mob is moving in. So in other words, the way we do that is we simply say that of course, if XA is actually greater than one, sorry, greater than zero. So in other words, if it's a positive number, we're going to, moving, we're going to be moving to the right. Um, if it's a negative number, we're gonna be moving to the left. So the way we actually set that is, think of it as a compass. So zero is up and we're just going clockwise. So zero is up, 
one is east or right, um, two is south or bottom or down, rather not bottom, down, um, and three of course is west or left. So in other words, direction is gonna equal one. If XA is less than zero, direction is gonna equal three, right, that's west. If YA, if YA is greater than zero, so in other words, if YA is, is actually going, um, is increasing, it's going down. So therefore the direction is gonna equal two, which is south. And finally, if YA is less than zero, then the direction is gonna equal zero, because we're going up, that's north. And that is how direction move. That is how the direction moves. All right. And you'll see that I'll actually put these things up into like the, the the debug screen or something, so that you guys can actually see how that works. But basically, you should be able to um to tell. Um, if this makes sense, leave a comment telling me it makes sense because it sounds like it makes sense in my head. But of course, you know, maybe I'm going too fast or something. Just let me know. Um, but yeah, that is that is how that works. So once again, you know, we input these two variables into here, which is uh, basically the direction that we need to move in. Um, combined, that's what they give us. Um, we, we also use this little series of if statements to determine which direction we move in. And don't tell me to use a switch statement. This is much better. Um, and finally, yep, so that, that that gives us the direction in which we have to move in. And this collision thing basically checks for collision. So it says that if there is no collision, then increase those variables over here. So our X and Y variables, which are our location for the mob. So in other words, move the actual mob if it passes all of these tests, which for, for now is just collision. But yeah, that is that is episode 42 of game programming, guys. Um, I'm actually taking a quick break over the holiday season. I'll be back soon. We might miss one or two episodes, but I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to resume this, but give me a few days. All right. I've spent some time with my family. So yeah. But um, after I actually return, after that holiday break, game programming is going to go back to being a daily show. So there you go. That's your Christmas present. So yeah, anyway, I miss, uh, I, I miss, I wish you guys a happy holidays, you know, Merry Christmas and a happy new year. And it is actually Christmas Eve right now. I'm recording this, but yeah, I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys probably in the new year. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of game programming. If you did, please hit that like button. Leave a comment saying Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, whatever it is you want to do. Happy holidays. Um, and yeah, just say Merry Christmas to each other. Be a, be a big, big, happy community. <laughs> so I'll see you guys next time. Later.